This is chapter 22, part 2, female reproductive system. Let's make sure we have sound. All systems are go. And you're ready to listen to me sing vagina, vagina. I, okay. This is on the female reproductive system and the vagina and the ovaries and the duct system that carries the eggs, and the, which includes the uterine tubes or fallopian tubes, the uterus and the vagina. We already mentioned vagina. Vagina! And the external genitalia, which does not include the vagina, but includes things like um, the labia minora and majora and the clitoris and urethral opening. Uh, here, once again, you have the rectum, just like we saw in males. Here's the uterus attached by the fallopian tube to the ovary. Um, here's the fimbrae, the finger-like projections that hover over the ovary and receive the egg. You'll, you'll hear later. Here's the cervix, the hole that protrudes into the vaginal opening from the uterus. Uh, here's the vagina, of course. The clitoris is the uh, stimulatory region, and here you have the labia uh, majora and minora. Okay, let's start with ovaries, first of all. Uh, there are lots of ovarian follicles, which are bags, and here we see uh, this primary follicle, and inside it we have the egg, or the ovum. It's not there yet, okay? It's not a full-on egg yet, okay? Inside there's an oocyte, which is what we call it, and around it is one layer of follicular cells in this primary follicle, and this begins to develop. Each month it develops and grows and grows and grows, okay? The stages include the primary follicle, which is the immature oocyte, and then we have the graphian follicle, which is growing uh, with a mature oocyte inside, which we see here. Uh, here's the graphian follicle, so it continues to grow and enlarge. And then uh, here's the uh, mature oocyte inside the ovum, inside the uh, follicular cells. And then uh, ovulation is the process of releasing this now secondary oocyte um, out into the world, more specifically into the fallopian tube, and leaving behind the follicular cells that you see here. Okay? Uh, so ovulation is when the egg is mature and the follicle ruptures. This is once every 28 days or so. It varies based on different people, um, different women, I should say, since only women ovulate. And then the ruptured follicle becomes the corpus luteum, which serves a very important purpose we'll talk about later uh, on the essence of uh, uh, making hormones to maintain the pregnancy. So the ovaries are held in place by different ligaments, suspensory, ovarian, and broad ligaments in different areas. We can see them in this picture here. Here's the broad ligament holding the ovary in place and attached to the uterus. You have the ovarian ligament attaching the ovary to the uterus as well. And then, um, uh, what am I missing? Uh, the round ligament here attaches the uterus to the, uh, to the wall there. Um, all these other structures, vagina, the cervix, uterus, um, uh, strong like bull. This looks like a bull to me, where these are the horns, right? Um, and the uterus itself is the face. So the uterine or fallopian tubes, they receive the ovulated oocyte and are the place where fertilization occurs. The sperm actually have to swim up through the, through the vagina, through the cervix, through the uterus, up into the fallopian tube if they're going to fertilize an egg. It's a long road to hoe. Uh, it attaches to the uterus and it doesn't physically attach to the ovary actually. Remember this structure, these fimbrae hover over the, um, over the ovary and it actually passes through some interstitial fluid in between. Now, um, inside the uterine tube is teeny tiny cilia that beat and help to move the egg, kind of like crowd surfing um, at a concert where the, the people are on top, that being the oocyte, and it moves it down towards the uterus. And this takes about three or four days, okay? Um, and again, this is where fertilization has to happen. In the uterus, uh, it's located between the bladder and the rectum. It's hollow, ready, ready for the baby to grow. And specifically, it receives, retains, and nourishes the fertilized egg. You can think of the uterus like a giant, cushy, soft pillow. And the oocyte is an egg that lays down on this red, bloody pillow. Visualize that. Good times. Um, so you have the main portion of the body. The fundus is where the uterine tubes enter. And then the cervix is where it leaves into the vagina. Now the walls, the main part you've probably heard about before is the endometrium or the endometrial lining. This is the inner layer and this is where the, the egg will implant itself and kind of burrow down and hide inside the, the, the bloody endometrium. And then at the end of the month, if there is no fertilization, the um, endometrium with the unfertilized oocyte will slough off and this is menses or your period, the, the bleeding that occurs every month. 
The muscle, the muscular wall of the uterus is called the myometrium. Myo means muscle again. And this smooth muscle is controlled by oxytocin, uh, for example, to trigger contractions. So every month uh, that a woman feels period cramps or is giving birth, um, that's the myometrium that's contracting. And then the perimetrium is the protective outer layer, uh, the visceral peritoneum, if you like. Um, the perimetrium is there for protection. Then you have the vagina. It extends from the cervix to the outside of the body, and it's behind the bladder in front of the rectum. This is the birth canal. It also receives the penis. I love how they write this. It receives the penis. This is where the penis enters during sexual intercourse. Uh, if no penis has ever entered for sexual intercourse, there's a structure called the hymen there in place, um, a wall, if you like, that closes off the vagina um, that gets ruptured during the first uh, sexual intercourse and can cause bleeding. So here we have the external genitalia. Uh, the fatty layer overlying uh, all these structures is called the mons pubis, um, and it's covered in pubic hair. Uh, only after puberty, of course. And then the labia are the skin folds, labia majora and labia minora, the larger labia majora on the outside. Uh, and then you have the vestibule, which is basically all the internal structures inside the labia minora, uh, or making up the labia minora and all that, and all everything inside, including the urethra opening and the vaginal opening and so on. Um, and then some, mu some glands that produce mucus. So here you can see the vestibule is essentially this structure here in the middle. The clitoris is the uh, um, stimulatory area. Uh, it's the equivalent to the male penis, more specifically the glands penis on the male. It is erectile tissue um, and can trigger orgasm. The majority of orgasms in female are triggered from clitoris stimulation, not vaginal stimulation. Um, and then we get to oogenesis, the equivalent in males to spermatogenesis, um, but different in its timing, okay? Uh, when a girl is born, she's born with all her eggs. They're not fully mature yet, but she's born with all her oocytes, primary oocytes, essentially. And once she hits puberty and hormone levels start to fluctuate, she now begins to ovulate and to release those eggs once a month. When she hits menopause, that's triggered by a decrease in hormones, estrogen and progesterone, and also a, a lack of eggs, a lack of oocytes to be fertilized. So, Reproductive ability ends at menopause, and there's some other secondary characteristics associated with that as well we'll talk about later. Um, we already mentioned that oocytes mature inside the follicles. The oogonia, much like the spermatogonia, are the original stem cells, but in girls it occurs during the fetal stage, so only in the fetus do you see oogonia. Once the girl's born, all those oogonia are gone. Uh, through mitosis, they've all become primary oocytes, and they just sit there waiting inside their follicular shell, if you like. Uh, waiting to be ovulated. These primary oocytes um, will then, one at a time, uh, develop at puberty uh, in response to FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone. So just like we saw follicle-stimulating hormone in men um, promoting sperm production, we have follicle-stimulating hormone in girls promoting um, the development of the follicles, okay, the cells around the oocyte and the oocyte itself to develop and grow and prepare for ovulation. Uh, so this is including meiosis, okay? Meiosis is going to divide, and we have meiosis 1. And it's a little different because meiosis 1 occurs uh, each month, and then only after ovulation, if a sperm enters the egg, will meiosis 2 occur. The final division will finish. These terms polar bodies are... Um, taking a step back, in males, when they go through meiosis, you started with one spermatogonia, or spermatogonium, and it became four sperm cells. Well, in girls, we start with one oogonium, and that divides, but it only makes one oocyte instead of four oocytes. And each time it divides, one of the cells is what we call a polar body. It gets very little of anything, just a little cytoplasm and stuff, and it de degrades and disappears. All the good nutrients and good stuff goes with the oocyte. And then meiosis II, again, only finishes after uh, the sperm enters the egg, the, the secondary oocyte, and uh, another polar body gets created for a total of two polar bodies during division. This is the overall process to show you. Um, looking at the left, we have uh, before birth, so in the fetus, we have mitosis to make a lot of these cells primary oocytes, and they have no stem cells left after they're born. Um, this primary oocyte is ready for meiosis, okay? So now once a month, uh, at puberty, this primary oocyte will divide once and make a secondary oocyte, just like we saw in males, a secondary spermatocyte. And here we have the first polar body that gets created, okay? Um, this secondary oocyte will stop. 
at the beginning of meiosis two. Now ovulation will occur, this secondary oocyte pops out. If a sperm enters, that will trigger a reaction to occur to divide again, forming another polar body, and um, now we have the actual ovum. Okay, so primary oocyte, secondary oocyte, and then ovum post-sperm entry. You'll also notice ovulation occurring here, um, and the development of the follicle. Here's the secondary oocyte being ovulated. And on that note, we are done with the vagina. Vagina. Vagina.